we've been talking about advocacy for some time, and when I grew up, we did advocacy, but in a very simple Girl Scout way, and it wasn't universal, but this was after the Great War, World War II, and then I did some at Antioch, but it, afterwards it wasn't a big thing. Vietnam in the 60s kind of killed it. So I am really excited that we do it here at Ursuline College and involve the students. So the conversation we're having right now is with Bess Mastriano and Stephanie Casa, who are both Big Shot seniors in our program and have taken the course Art and Advocacy. I'm Pat Fallon. I'm a professor uh, in the Earth and Studies program and in the Art Department, also chair of the Art Department currently. And uh, we are sitting here talking about some advocacy. This is some work I have done. Uh, I did about four years ago. I started doing work on Darfur. I know why I am passionate about what I'm doing, but these women also have passion, and I would like them to talk to me about it. Well, one of the things that I've found it, with all of us as artists is that we absolutely must make art. That's just something we have to do, just like um, you know, a, a banker must bank, or a librarian must work in a library. And, and I don't mean that in a, in a bad way at all. I mean, this is our vocation. And what I, what I personally do, what I've found the most valuable through my work is making really beautiful images and then having an uh-oh moment when you realize that what I'm saying with that beautiful image is not beautiful at all. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tell you something. Um, so I want to grab your attention through beauty and then I want to um, sucker punch you with a message. Um, my work is a bit similar to Beth's. Um, I choose to create awareness in my pieces by taking two parallels that exist in the world that we might not realize and putting them together. And currently what I'm working on is um, people who don't have to be concerned with how they're going to eat their next meal and kind of taking their remnants of that and putting it together with um, starving babies in Africa who don't have a morsel to eat. So it's kind of just pulling two things together and just creating awareness of an issue that's, I think, very important in today's society. I, I following that up, I know why I do what I do. I, I tried a lot of routes. I've been out on the streets and I've marched and uh, I've taken part in a lot of activities and written letters when necessary, but I finally decided, as Beth knows, I'm an artist and what I do is make art, so I use my art in the service of, so to speak, and, and uh, don't pull a punch, <laughs> kind of shove it in your face, but my goal has been to make visible what people don't want to see. You know, it's there, but they don't want to know about Darfur, they don't want to know about genocide, they don't want to know that they actually cut limbs off so that the boys will live but not be able to make a living and no one will marry them. And they, they, it's not murder, it's mutilation. And they, so that's why I choose this venue. And, they, they, and so I know what you're doing, and I know you're doing it because you're artists, but what was the key that moved you in? How did you get involved? Well, actually, um, this past summer I went to Chicago, and I was walking in a back alley with my brother. And I'll never forget this moment. We were walking, and I saw one man, he was carrying armfuls of groceries, and there was like not even 50 feet in front of him, another man digging through the trash. And to me, that was just, there you go. that was it. And I took a picture of it, and that is just like burned into my mind, just how we can coexist like that and not even realize that the hunger, like the hungry are 10 feet from not us. Not see each other. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, for me, I think, it's sort of a, it's, I think it's a, like kind of like the double standard, or I could call it the double bind, if you will. Um, you, you do something, you say something, you walk the walk, or you talk the talk, but you don't do both. And it's really important for me to do both. Um, so if I believe in something very strongly, art is how I'm going to let you know. Because 
I can't always speak what I want to say, but I can make an image that will last indefinitely and you can find out what I want to say. I think artists articulate better in their medium and that uh, it can be any medium, that's our gift and that's what you put in the service. I'm interested though to talk a little bit about what you found at Earthland because when I first came here I would not have expected this to be a place of advocacy. And, uh, and then, of course, Sister Diane dragged me to Fort Benning, and uh, I, my job was to keep her from uh, climbing the fence and getting arrested again, because that would have been an automatic five years. So I went to protect the nuns and got bitten. It was the most moving funeral march I have ever been in. And I know the art club participates to that, and you also have done murals in schools mm -hmm. here. So you want to, these are also co-chair of the art club here. Yes, we have a group called the Student Arts Organization for Peace and Justice. Thing, it's um, it's called Women's Watch, and it's usually in March. Is that about the time it is? Yes. Early spring. And what it is is we get the list of names of people, mostly women and children under the age of 18, who were killed from the Cuyahoga coroner, and we put their names, age, um, on figures, and then we silently march them through the campus just holding up the figures and just bringing awareness, once again, to the campus. I think this past year we had 87 um, figures that were marched around campus, so this, this was the largest that we've ever had. And it's just one more way to make people aware and let them see that these people in our community are dying from domestic violence. And it's just, it's definitely a very moving march. Well, to give you a little background on that, it happens every spring because the, one of uh, our nuns was uh, murdered and uh, raped and abused in the woods here. And we feel very strongly about the woods. I take classes to the woods. And, uh, and uh, Sister Diane and some of the sisters who taught here felt very bad because at the same time there was a woman in Cleveland that was raped, beaten up, and killed. And the newspapers, of course, didn't cover that. What they covered was the Ursula Nunn, and they felt this was terrible. That was when Women Watch began. And it began with a few figures they've cut in wood out, which are painted red. And they, so I know that because every spring I'm in the middle of the night painting more figures because of the number is growing. And uh, everybody says crime is decreasing. Well, they must not be counting women because that number is really growing. So that's the, the history on that. So there's a, a, a thing about that. There's also the Fort Benning comes in because uh, Dorothy Casel was one of our nuns. This is her home, this is her home. And she was one of the uh, three women, church women, that were uh, raped and shot and buried in El Salvador. What do we think art w makes or predicts for our future? I mean, why do we think this will really change the world? I mean, that's a hope. But... I, I think it's art is one of the things that lasts, stands the test of time. I, I was lucky enough to just return from France. I went to the Louvre. It was packed to the gills with people, and it was packed to the gills with ancient art to the present. And so that was like a wake-up call. It said, art is important. It does last. It does tell the message of the time. See, for me, it's the old cliche, you know, a picture says a thousand words. You guys weren't there to see what I saw in the alley. Right. But if I can show you that, and I can show you every angle and every feeling about that, then it just it brings that moment that was so special to me to life for you guys, and you can experience it as well. That's the magic of art. That's it's the passion that pulls the viewer in. If it's not there, it won't work. It's not something that we can leave at the office. I'm always thinking <laughs> yeah, about art. Always, on, three o'clock in the morning, I wake right. up and I'm like, that's what I need to do to fix that piece. Right. So it's not something that you can separate yourself from because it's so much a part of you that it's. It, you, you just always have it with you, so you can't just leave it at the office and come home and have a separate life. It like it is your life. It consumes almost everything you do. Don't stop creating because once you stop, it's almost like your voice dies, and yeah. no one, no one will see what you have to say. Exactly. So my big thing is I'm never going to stop creating and making art. And like Beth said, the big thing you can't just create; you have to show. 
because if I make wonderful things and it just sits in my house, in my studio, you know, that's almost another way that your voice dies.